The full focus planner does come in a bound book edition as well as a spiral option. So I went with the spiral option just to switch it up a little bit. So starting at the first page, when you open it up, it has the title of the full focus planner and then it says plan your year, design your days, achieve your biggest goals, a place for you to put your name and your contact information as well as the year and the quarter. This is a 90 day planner so it should theoretically get you through a quarter of a year. So this planner has a lot less guidance in terms of goal setting or how to use the planner because it does have a link at the very top here. You can find tips, training, and community at fullfocusplanner.com forward slash start. And also the Full Focus Planner does have full instructional videos on YouTube. Those YouTube videos go through each individual section and how to use them in the planner. I will say that they are a little lengthy, which is okay for me. I've sat through most of them. There are just a few things that I haven't had a chance to watch just yet. But if you're interested in the planner, I would check out their YouTube channel and see how they recommend you use it. The next page is a table of contents. Then there is a quote page and that is followed by these annual goals. As was implied in the first sheets, there are or they recommend that you focus on 12 annual goals and there's 12 individual sections here for you to write your goal statement. It has a little Q with an asterisk. It has a check whether or not you've completed it and a number as well. It says write the number of the quarter in which the goal is due so there is some guidance walking you through these individual pages. Next you have your goal detail pages. So you also have 12 of these even though this is supposed to be just a 90 day journal for you to focus on two to three goals. It gives you the goal detail for all 12 of your goals. This starts with a goal summary. It encourages you to write your smarter goal. Similar to the smart goals that many of us may be familiar with, the smarter goals are kind of a different slant on that. This planner recommends that your goals be specific, measurable, actionable, risky, time-based or time-keyed, then exciting, oh, exciting and relevant to your life. So that gets you to the smarter concept. They also break goals down to two different types, achievement goals and habit goals. So achievement goals have a specific end date and you can actually say like, I have hit that. Something like run a half marathon, right? That is a specific thing that you are able to complete. And a habit goal could be something like go to the gym four times a day for 13 weeks. Then they have 10 domains. They discuss uh, different life domains, including things like spiritual, parental, intellectual, social, emotional, vocational, physical, marital, financial, and avocational, which is like my favorite word usage here. Um, it has to do with like hobbies, things that are like goal oriented, but not directly related to your job. So what domain is that or does that goal fall under? Then you have your key motivations and then they want you to rank your key motivations. So that's why they have a little line separating this larger space. Over here they want you to rank those key motivations. The first few action steps, the next steps that you should be taking within that goal. Then your reward, decide how you will celebrate once you've achieved your goal. And then there is a streak tracker for you to check off your progress as you go. It says this is particularly helpful for habit-based goals. And you have three months that are delineated by M1, M2, M3, and then you have 31 spaces. So you have 12 of those pages. That takes us to page 18. Page 18 will have your first monthly calendar. This is the first of three. This calendar or this planner is undated. The days of the week are labeled already, Monday through Sunday. And then on the far right hand corner, you have line spaces for your major projects for the month. You have three of those monthly calendars here in the front. That's followed by your rolling quarters. There's a space for you to write the quarter and the year on each page and this first page is going to cover six months of time and you actually have two pages of rolling quarters so you have an entire year of rolling quarters or entire year overview in these two pages. The last thing to note here are these blank spaces and that's for you to write the individual days of the week. So for example, if this was January, January 4th fell on a Thursday, for example, you can write um, an H for Thursday or a T for Thursday, depending on how you wanna label it. It just provides you with a little bit more structure in your forward planning.
That is followed by the daily rituals page, and I think this is my favorite spread in the planner. This spread consists of four sections, and you're encouraged to write down your morning rituals as well as your evening rituals, but I think these two sections are actually the most unique that I've seen. This asks for a workday startup ritual and then a workday shutdown ritual. I love that there are four different sections for these different rituals. I also like that it has a slot here for your allotted time. That way you can fit these specific rituals into your daily schedule. That's followed by an ideal week overview and I also love the setup of this. It gives you individual half hour slots starting at 5 a.m. taking you through 9 p.m. There is an individual spot for each day of the week including Saturday and Sunday so each day of the week gets equal space. That is followed by your key projects spread. It allows for a page and a half of projects and then there's a small uh, hashtag or a number sign here on the far left hand corner. I believe that's to prioritize your projects. You also have a column on the far right for due dates. And then the second half of this page gets you started for your next set of daily pages. This is gonna take you through your first seven days of using the daily spreads in the planner. So this asks for your weekly big three list three objectives to advance your goals and projects over the next week, and it gives you ample space to write down those three objectives. That's followed by your first daily page. It's gonna start on a Monday, so you can't just uh, write in any day of the week, so that's something to think about. Your first uh, start, or your first official daily page starts on a Monday. There is the day of the week, a space for you to write the date, it does have a countdown of how many weeks are remaining in the quarter. So this is your first day, you have 13 weeks remaining in the quarter. It has a checklist. This is, again, one of my favorite parts because it relates back to that favorite spread of mine, which is, did you finish your morning ritual? Did you do your uh, startup ritual, your shutdown, and your evening ritual? So this is a little check off for whether or not you did each of those groups of tasks. Then you have your big three, your top three most important tasks of the day. There is a space for all of your other tasks. You have space for 19 additional tasks. Then you have an hourly breakdown for the day. It doesn't start at five, but you do have two additional lines over the six. So theoretically it could start at five or you can use these two lines for something else because the actual timeline starts at 6 a.m. and it ends at 9 p.m. Again, the 9 p.m. does not have a nine next to the line. The last labeled line is 8 p.m. Given the format, you could assume that you can go down to 9 p.m. if you chose to do that, or you can choose to do something else with these last two lines. The right-hand side of the two-page daily spread is a full on notes section. It's lined, and you're also provided with some symbols here at the bottom of the page. If you wanted to use these symbols, they have a square for to-do, a circle for delegate, an asterisk for important, and then a question mark to identify questions that's within your note system. For your task list, they suggest a different key down here at the bottom. They have a check for done, a slash for waiting for, a circle for delegate, an arrow for defer, and an X for delete. So that is gonna be the first daily two-page spread. That's gonna be followed by seven of the first daily spreads. It's gonna take you through Sunday of that week. After those first seven days, you have your first weekly preview. The weekly preview is for the next week, so for your second week using the planner. Step one here is uh, identify your big wins, which is list three to five major accomplishments for the past or from the past week. Then there's the after action review, and you want to identify how far did you get with your weekly big three. That's what you started off with before the first Monday spread. Then what worked and what didn't work. There's also a space here for you to write the percent complete you are in each of your big three goals that you identified before the week started. Then a space for you to write what worked and what didn't work. What will you keep doing? What will you improve upon? What will you start doing? And what will you stop doing next week? Step three is called a list sweep and it says process action items and consider next steps. So look at all of your open outstanding tasks. Look at what you have decided to defer or delegate. Look through your daily notes and see if there's any assignments that need to go into your task manager and then review your annual and your quarterly goals. Finally, step 
four is a weekly overview. You can list important events, deadlines, or tasks that are in the upcoming week, and then you can use the weekly view on the next page if you think it's gonna be helpful. I'm gonna flip to that in just a moment, but it does give you some areas for you to differentiate personal versus professional. These sections allow you to start to think through what the next week is going to look like before you identify what specific goals you'll be tackling that week. Here is their weekly overview, which is a weekly layout for you to write down things that are happening Monday through Sunday. Here you do not have equal space for each day of the week. Saturday and Sunday are shared here at the bottom. You do have a full horizontal row for each of the weekdays. Step five is to identify your weekly big three. So list the three objectives that will advance your goals and projects this week. I especially enjoy how this planner is laid out in terms of the weekly preview because I do think that it's important to understand what your obligations are for the upcoming week before you start thinking about what are the things that you can tackle in addition to some of those hard appointments or meetings or family obligations that you have spread out during the week. So you wanna do your weekly layout here, the big things that are happening, and then you can go ahead and identify those three objectives that you wanna tackle that week. The sixth and final step is this self-care planner. So you're encouraged to look at these five different domains of self-care, your sleep, how you eat, your movement, how you connect, and an area for relaxation. Then you move on to your two page daily spread for week number two. The one difference that you'll see in this page other than the changing of the quotes as you go through the planner is that up here you will be in week 12 rather than week 13 because there are 12 weeks left to this quarter. Once you're done with the second week in this planner, you again have that weekly preview and that's gonna be consistent throughout the planner. You'll have seven days that are labeled Monday through Sunday. Then you'll have your four page weekly preview you for the following week. That goes on for 13 weeks, and then at the end of the planner, you have your quarterly preview. So that is gonna be similar to your weekly preview. It's first going to ask you to review the preceding quarter, so what were your biggest wins, your top accomplishments in the last quarter. Next will be an after action review, and then you can ask yourself how far did you get and what percent complete you are. Then what worked, what didn't work, here is a nicely laid out page. What will you keep doing? What will you improve? What will you start doing? And what will you stop doing in the next quarter? Then you're provided with additional steps on how to move forward now that you've gone through the 90 day journal, including connect with your long range vision. So do your life plan review, perform an annual goal review to connect with your yearly goals, do a monthly calendar review so that you can schedule next quarter's big rocks, so those things that you might wanna put in your uh, monthlies for the next planner or what you have written out in your 12-month overview since that's supposed to be a section for those big rocks. Review your ideal week and see if you need to change anything based on the last 90 days. Review your daily rituals, tweak them based on your experiences. And then the last step is to start your new daily pages and it ends with enter the dates into your new planner. So it provides a nice roadmap for how to transition out of this planner once you're done with those initial 90 days. Then there is ample note space in the back. There are about 13 individual pages of notes. They are lined and they also have have um, small divisions on the far left hand corner and on the far right hand corner and a very faint clock here on the far right hand side. Those notes pages end on page 302 and there is where you have a two page index. The columns here are labeled topic and page and they are found in the very last pages of the planner 302 and 303. That is followed by this final page advertising both a podcast and a coaching service. And the very back of the planner does have an accordion style cardstock pocket. So some specs about the Full Focus Planner. I purchased mine on the Full Focus website for $39.99. 
They are currently running a 10% off promotion if you are watching this video when it premieres. So if you wanted a little bit of a discount, it is currently on sale. I will leave the link to this one, which is the gray linen planner in the description box below. The dimensions of this planner are six by nine, and that's a little bit bigger than an A5. So here's one of my A5 journals, so you can see that it's a little bit taller and a little bit wider than a conventional A5 bound notebook. The cover is a water resistant coated 100% cotton. It is available both in a bounded book and in this spiral option. The spiral option comes with a matte gold coil. It is the O-ring coiling. This planner is 304 pages. The paper is a 60 pound cream uncoated paper. It has one pocket in the back and it is made out of 100% recyclable materials. Since I know that this is 60 pound paper, I'm interested to see how this paper holds up to some of my pens. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a pen test. All in all, this paper held up pretty well. You can see that there is some minimal ghosting. There is definitely ghosting and bleed through with the Sharpie, but that could be expected. Not many people are writing their notes in a Sharpie, but even the really juicy Twisby Eco 1.1 is not bleeding through. I do see that some of the felt tip pens are having a little bit more ghosting than others, but overall, it looks like it's a pretty good quality paper. So this is the part of the video where I review my pros and cons for the planner. In this case, I don't have many cons. One of the things that is potentially lacking in this planner is that there's not too much guidance for goal setting written at the beginning of the planner. And one of the reasons for that is that they have a pretty extensive video library on YouTube explaining the individual sections of the planner. And they also have some PDFs that you can download that explain each section of the planner. So those things are not built into the planner, but that that also allows them room to have some of the other extras that they have included in this planner or some additional sections or larger sections that I've seen in other goal setting planners. The other thing that is a potential con is the paper weight. So when you have 60 pound paper, you could potentially have some ghosting or bleed through depending on the pens that you use. But I used a wide variety of pens, including a fountain pen in my pen test and I found that the paper held up pretty well. In terms of specific pros, I like the general aesthetic of the planner, so that's something that's important to me. I was happy that there was a coil option for this. I have, I do enjoy bound books, but it was interesting to be able to have a goal setting planner that was on a coil rather than that bound system for a little bit of a change of pace. And if you prefer coils to bounded books, sometimes I do enjoy being able to fold the planner in on itself and write on it that way. So I appreciated that I was able to explore a different binding system with this planner. I love the extensive four pages of weekly review so that you can review last week and prepare for next week. I really like that focused, intentional pause to think through, do your after action review, think about what you have to do next week before you go ahead and just dive right into your top three goals for the following week. And as I said in the video, I particularly liked their daily routines spread where you were able to think through not just your morning routine and evening routine, but also your work startup and work wind down routines. As with all the reviews that I'm doing this month, I'm going to reserve judgment on how well the planner works for me since I have not used this for goal setting just yet, but I am trying out all of the planners that I've reviewed. Once I have used the planners for a period of time, I will come back and do an update on how I feel about these planners. If that has already happened, I will link it in the description box down below. Otherwise, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss my updates and follow-ups on these goal setting planners. And that's all I have for you today on the Full Focus Planner. Until next time, guys, make plans and prepare to modify.